This is Eileen Griffin with the Heartland View from the Heartland Daily News, bringing you information and analysis about public policy stories that affect your life, your health, your freedom, and the nation's economy. This week, we're going to briefly cover three stories that are all somewhat related. I'm going to tell you how they're related, uh, but they're all things happening currently in the public policy world. But we're going to start with a story from Stephen Moore, and it's called Taxpayers Are Getting Ripped Off and Congress Does Nothing. And this article that he writes is about the unemployment system primarily. And so the problem that we're having is we have this unemployment system that's now been expanded. So the government's added benefits, they've added a, an increased amount that entices people to stay on unemployment longer. And that's not the goal of unemployment. Unemployment was designed to be a bridge when you lose a job until you get another job. It's not supposed to be a way of life. It's not supposed to be another welfare program. And the, other, the bigger problem is not only is it just enticing people into laziness and into unemployment and to continuing to be less productive, it's also taking the taxpayer dollar and throwing it out the window. And so what Moore points out is it's not just this ongoing continued payment, but there's so much fraud in the system. So there's so much fraud and they've been able to track it. They know where the fraud is. There's enormous amounts of fraud where there's taxpayer dollars going to other countries through the unemployment system and there's taxpayer money going to people who simply don't want to work. They don't want to take a job. They would rather stay home and collect money. And who does that hurt? Well, the people that are still going to work. So the people that are going to work every day and doing their job and getting their 40 hours in and getting their paycheck, well, they're going to pay more and more taxes to continue to support the people who've decided that they don't want to work. And that's because of government policy. Didn't used to be that way. The unemployment insurance program used to have oversight. It used to have accountability. It used to make it more difficult. So if someone was going to collect unemployment, there, there was accountability. They had to prove that they were looking for work. They had to show the only reason they were collecting unemployment was because they could not possibly find a job and they had to document and prove to the unemployment agencies that were involved where they were, what their job activities were, how was their job search going, where have they applied, what interviews did they have, and they had to track and monitor all that. Now, nothing. No accountability at all. And so Moore says, quote, Congress and the White House should be ashamed of this wreck of a program with a fraud rate of close to 10%. For private credit card, insurance, or lending companies, fraud rates are 1% to 2%. A 10% fraud rate would put them in Chapter 9 bankruptcy. But in Washington, being defrauded of $87 billion of taxpayer money is apparently a green light for Congress to pass another $4.5 trillion of spending. End quote. It's always easy to spend other people's money. So it's taxpayer dollars, Congress people continue to spend it. So now we're going to talk about the next article, which is on women's equality and empowerment. And the title of the argument, the title of the article is Economic Freedom is the Best Path to Women's Equality and Empowerment. And the article talks about how if you want to see women, if you care about women's opportunities and women's advancements, and you say you're interested in, in women's equality, then why wouldn't you support economic freedom and free markets? Why wouldn't you support a capitalist economy where there's opportunities for women and everybody? And in a capitalist country, you can do whatever you want. If you want to start a business, you can do that. If you want to find a different job, find a career, get job training for a career, get education for a career, all of these things exist in a capitalist country and opportunities are open wide. The article says, quote, there's considerable evidence that the best environment to promote equality is a free market economy that emphasizes a strong rule of law, regulatory efficiency, and open markets, end quote. And so you can see, and they tracked it through the Heritage Foundation, their um, report on economic freedom shows that more free countries have better opportunities for women. So the, the freer the countries with the economic freedom and opportunities, those kinds of countries also make good places for women entrepreneurs, women business owners, and anybody that wants to improve their lives. So we need these things. We need these environments where we have this um, economic opportunity. That's the best way for people to advance. So if you care about, and certain people in, um, in our government, certain people um, currently in leadership positions in our government, say that they really care about the, the um, equality issues, they care about women, they care about marginalized people, the best thing they could do, according to all the data, is promote a capitalist economy. If you want people to gain equality, to advance, to find ways to get ahead, then a free and fair market is the way to do it. And you can read the rest of the article on heartlanddailynews.com with a lot of the data and ways to find more of that data. But for women's equality and freedom and for everybody that wants to 
grow, that wants to have a better lifestyle, that wants to use their skill, their creativity, their entrepreneurial energy to advance, it can happen in a capitalist economy. So uh, the Heritage Foundation also says that you need to be careful about in these unfree countries, women tend to be more abused and women tend to be not only not have the opportunities, but they tend to be looked at as second class citizens. Now we know this and we've seen it and we're going to see it again exemplified in the takeover of Afghanistan. So as this country uh, basically deteriorates and as the Taliban takes over, the worst victims of that is going to be women. And so in this country, we still argue about women's equality, but in that country, there's no discussion and there won't be in a very short period of time. So that's our segue into our final article by Dennis Prager. And the title of this article is, quote, this is manifestly not Saigon, Saigon and our society of lies. And Dennis Prager says, talking about what's happening in Afghanistan, we have the, our own Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, said on ABC this week, he talked about, well, people were asking, you know, was this Saigon? You know, you see all these images of all these poor people in Afghanistan desperately trying to get out of the country, clinging to the airplanes that are leaving, clinging to the last vestiges of Americanism in their country. And they, have, and they realize that that's not gonna work. They're going to be stuck and their fate is well known. They know it and we know it and our government knows it. So if you cared about women's rights, the last place on earth you'd not wanna support would be Afghanistan. But Dennis Prager says it's, it's beyond that, just in terms of what this says about us. What does it say about our country? Not just about what's gonna happen in Afghanistan, but in every aspect of society. He says, quote, this statement sums up the, the statement about this is manifestly not Saigon, right? We saw images. We saw with our own eyes what's happening in Afghanistan and the similarities to Saigon are undeniable. But Dennis Prager says, quote, that statement sums up the state of the United States of America. We have become a society of lies, end quote. He goes on to say, quote, truth has never been a left-wing value. People on the left are committed to saying whatever furthers their agenda, true or false, end quote. So he goes on to say that if, if we have a secretary of state who can get on television and say, basically deny what's happening in Afghanistan, the left can say things that aren't biologically real and yet nobody can challenge them without being canceled or attacked. And if there's all kinds of other things, you know, what's happening in our school districts, the school children are being told lies about the history of America, but that's okay. Other lies that are all over the place. You see people go on television, politicians, elected officials, and they can say things that can't possibly be true, but they can say it. And so Prager says, this is a deterioration of our society. And if we have become a society of lies, where's the, where's the end game? So it was a rough week policy-wise. Tried to cover the stories as uh, quickly, but yet with the bang that you need to know what's going on inside of each of those stories, Please look at all the details on heartlanddailynews.com. Otherwise, as always, thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. Have a great week.